Iron Man South Africa was wild. really cool looking swim where they had a fairly strong onshore wind and very choppy conditions so these are conditions that you don't often get in Ironman and aside from perhaps Ironman Florida where we saw something like two or three hundred age groupers not make the swim cutoff because I think they had the course kind of set in the wrong direction for the current um, this here is like you know some really good challenging conditions probably eight years ago I posted some footage from Ironman Melbourne where it was the toughest conditions I'd ever seen in an Ironman competition. And I'll have, if you have a look at the footage here, it was fairly decent sized waves, strong onshore wind, and very difficult for a lot of people. And I know many people didn't get out past the breakers. So uh, I imagine it was probably fairly similar here. They shortened the swim. Instead of 3.8K, it was a 1.9K swim for the pro field. And I think it might've even been 700 meters for the age groupers. I wanna show you this video where we can break down some of the strategies that worked well for people and some that didn't and here you can see like the size of the size of the waves and look it doesn't look massive here but particularly when you're in those conditions it can feel a lot bigger than what it kind of looks so i know what it's like being out there when it can feel very big and for those swimmers that aren't necessarily super comfortable in the ocean or in uh, conditions where there's waves like this then uh, hopefully this video will give you a couple of pointers that's going to help you deal with these conditions so the first thing is just just here with the beach start, we can see that there was a couple athletes here that, that got out really quickly. Now, when we when we are running into the surf, we need to get the knees up. And you can see, this is quite a good example here. You can see the knees are up, the feet are coming out to the side to get them over the top of the water. So it's like you're sort of flinging your feet out to the side, getting the knees up nice and high because that's going to help you get over the get over the waves. You can see that nice high knees, feet out to the side there if we're looking at, at this swimmer. This is excellent. And you can see, no wonder he's leading the field here, because you look how high he's getting, really sort of getting up nice and high. Elbows are up as well. You've got to use your arms to help get yourself over the water. And see, if you compare it to this athlete at the back, whoops, have a look how he's taking these, these like smaller these smaller little steps, like moving probably almost looks like half a meter forwards. Compare that to, to the athlete out the front. Have a look at how his steps are quite a bit bigger. He's really sort of taking these big steps as he goes forward, like really sort of leaping, leaping forwards compared to these small ones. So that's what's going to help you keep your speed as you're going through. Now, the next part here is that if you're in water, that sort of knee to like waist depth, and you've got a wave coming. You can see that these guys are diving over the top of those waves. Because if they were to dive down, it's going to be too shallow and they're probably gonna hit their head and there's just not enough water there to make it worthwhile to sort of duck over. So they're jumping over the waves there. Now, when you get a little bit deeper, about closer towards waist depth, as you can see here, you'll notice that the waves are coming now, you've, you've got two options. You can either dive over it depending on where you are and you can see that he's kind of left it a bit late to be able to, to dive under. So he ends up going over the top, gets the hips up, tries to get the legs over the top and that works pretty nicely. Now you see here, this guy, he can see it coming. And so he dives forwards, he goes down into the, into the sand. He will have grabbed the hold of that sand wait for the wave to, to pass and get his feet underneath himself and then start going again. And then you'll see it particularly as we get through a little bit more of it. So we've got this wave here. Now it's looking like they're, where are they at? Still, shallow, still fairly shallow there. So you can see he's only up to his, he's only up to his uh, knees in this piece of water. So he's thinking, all right, that's not deep enough for me to be able to go under still. So he waits for it, dives over the top again, and then continues to go through. 
Now, I think he starts to get a little bit deeper here. So he's getting closer to waist depth. Now he's got to go under, especially with this bigger wave. So you can see that, he, again, he dives under. He's going to grab that sand, wait for the wave to pass a little bit, and then he can put his feet on and jump forwards. That's that porpoising. Now you'll see, look out the back. Some of these guys are just like diving over the top or even diving into it. So watching, watching this guy here, waiting for it, and then he dives straight into it. But you're just going to get hit by that oncoming water, and it's just going to push you backwards. Let's see where he ends up. So he's getting got washed back. See how he, he went from you know, in front of these guys to getting pushed back, and that's just because he dived in the wrong, the wrong spot. Yeah, and again, this guy here just and he started to swim there too. So see there, he tries to get over it. Much better just going under like this, this guy. Goes over the top, gets pushed back, and then he tries to swim. But that water's still moving, and so he's just not going anywhere. He's even going backwards. And these guys here, they got their feet in the sand, just like letting that, um, that wave pass and then continue to dive forwards. So just the skill of getting out well is an important one, especially in any conditions like this. And I know it doesn't happen all the time, but if you're well prepared for this, then you can see how, look, if the swim is gonna make or break your Ironman, whether it's a difference between a place at Kona or you know, uh, qualifying for another event or hitting the time you want, then this can, um, you know, it's, it's an important thing to do or to get good at. And really the only way to get good at it is to practice it and practice it again and again and again. So just going out with others, if you can, like friends or with a squad or a, you know, your triathlon club, doing that practice again and again, getting used to these skills, it's an important one. And as I said, it can make or break your, your event. So that was, the, uh, that was that part of it. Now, the other thing that tends to happen when it's conditions like this is you're not gonna be able to have that smooth and perfect stroke. You know, if a couple of weeks ago, we looked at Lucas uh, Voigt's Ironman swim, which was incredibly fast. I think it was like 43 or 44 minutes or something. Really fast swim. And he had such a beautiful stroke there, but the conditions were flat. He's not going to be able to use the exact sort of style when you've got conditions like this. You can see how choppy it is in this, uh, particularly as, as they're going out where the water's shallower. So you'll notice that, all right, the recovery is fairly straight arm for most of these, most of these guys. Let's bring it back a bit. So we can see as you've got the water, like these big sort of choppy waves, look how sort of um, not rushed, but just how like funny that recovery arm is. This arm comes over pretty high. It's just, it's not pretty, but sometimes it's what you got to do when it's choppy. So for me, when I'm in these conditions, I'm just looking to get my arm over any way possible to get over fast and get that hand in. Because if I'm trying to have the hand close to the water and this nice, high elbow recovery, I'm probably gonna hit the oncoming waves. So I'll typically go to like a straighter or higher and wider recovery. And my motto for going from the pool to the open water is higher, faster, and wider. Meaning your arm recovery might have to come over higher, you might need to be wider with it, and you often need to get the stroke rate up a bit compared to the pool. So higher, wider, faster, I think it's a good motto to follow when it comes to your, your open water swimming. And so as we see coming through here, we're not worried about how well we're coming over. Just get that arm over fairly fast, get it in the water. And the same thing goes with your, with your entry position. So as we start to, I'm gonna skip forwards here. With the entry position, so you can't be that perfect with your, with your entry. Meaning, you know, one of the things that I will sort of teach is we wanna get the fingertips in first Let's find a better shot here. We want to get the fingertips in uh, first with the elbow up when it comes to where we're entering the water. Now you can see, you can see here that um, that's not the case. Like they're coming through, and the entry is quite flat, and it haven't hasn't gone fingers first, elbow up that we that we train. So I still want people to do that in the pool but when it goes to open water, sometimes that goes out the window. You might need to enter a little bit further forwards. You might need sometimes enter a bit earlier, but like just throwing the arm out there is usually what, what we're best off doing. 
And then same with the catch. You're not going to have as you're not going to be able to get this nice sort of reach and glide out the front if it's like this. All we want to try and do is just get straight in to some sort of catch position. And so if you've done something like our five day catch challenge, it's really good for just helping you get familiar and get the feel for what that catch position is. So if you can get something that resembles that and hold some water as you go through and have a decent rating that way, that's kind of a, that's a big part of it. We don't need to be perfect as, we, as we're swimming in these sort of conditions. So they're just like, there's some of the changes that we'll go through when it goes to open water swimming. So if you are having trouble converting your pool times to the open water, um, a couple of these things can, can really help. So it was pretty um, yeah, wild swim here. And you could see the difference between those that had done it before and those that had practiced it. And, and this is in the pro field uh, compared to those that, that hadn't. So if you haven't had the chance to swim open water, um, then try and get yourself there, whether it's a lake or a, an ocean, and make sure you've got the safety there and, um, and you, you know, cover yourself that way. But uh, it's, a, it's a really quite a different skill to have. Um, inside of our membership, we've got the Art of Triathlon swimming course, which covers a lot of this stuff like your sighting. Um, we've got our entries and exits and boy turns and all that sort of stuff. So um, you can see that inside our, our members area. And our podcast, which is going out uh, today as well, um, have a listen to that one with uh, Phil Clayton, who's professional surf Ironman swimmer, professional swim coach. Um, we talk about some of this stuff as well on that podcast. So uh, I'll leave the link below to our podcast too. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. We're um, a bit over 2,008 sub- 8,000 subscribers, which is um, which I'm very thankful for. Thankful for. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, we've got our beginner freestyle course coming out really soon, which I'm excited about. So for those of you that struggle to make it more than 100 meters without stopping, this course is designed for you to get you to your first 400 without stopping. So uh, I'll hopefully have that out next week or the week after. So uh, yeah, catch you soon.